So, hey, I'm gonna cut up some lemons and talk to you guys just for a little bit. This is a world This is a world premiere. This is a world So, morning, y'all. So, it's um, Sunday. It's the day after Earth Day in 2017 and I am up in the morning. I've just walked Jack and I'm gonna make a batch of this lemonade as part of this master cleanse but I'm not um, I'm not gonna focus on the master cleanse I will talk to you guys a little bit about how I do this really simply what was really interesting like the first time I did a master cleanse I was so like concerned with doing it right and I, it's like and when I look back on the science of it honestly if you're just if you're doing uh, you know a kind of any kind of like fasting or cleansing or whatever it is it's fasting I'm fasting you guys and it's probably a terrible you guys have already talked about this and it's connected to tons of other things and I will get deeper into that stuff but that's not what I wanted this talk to be about but what is kind of funny is this idea that like you know the measurements and the exact it's like you're drinking maple syrup and lemon juice and cayenne pepper right like so what I do is I fill a gallon with water um, I usually don't fill it last. This is tap water. Um, you know, I live in New York City and I'm putting it in a Poland spring bottle. No, not advertising, not being paid. This is not a paid advertisement. So, um, so I just fill, a, you know, I, I put in my, you know, mixture and then I add the water and the cayenne pepper and then I walk around and, I, and my hope is to try to, you know, drink this gallon. Now, um, you know, in terms of, you know, how many glasses of the lemonade, I put, you know, four or five lemons, and then I probably put the equivalent of, you know, a cup, maybe a cup of the maple syrup. Usually, you know, I'm going to say this is a, you know, this is it. This is a 16 fluid ounce um, bottle. This is the only size that they had it available in. I would have gotten a much bigger bottle if I could have, but I go through two of these. I go through one of these every two days. So I'm using about a cup in the mixture. Um, sometimes I'll, you know, you know, it might be a little less. I don't know. Sometimes the bottle lasts a little bit longer, but again, I'm not, it's not, I'm not measuring, um, for any precise science. I figure I'm probably getting more than, I'm probably getting more than I would be getting in a single serving. Um, you know, if I, if I did like eight servings or what have you, because I'm drinking a glass, a uh, gallon of water and I'm kind of like more um, uh, impressed with the fact that I'm drinking a gallon of water a day. That's a lot of liquid to get through, you know, and I would um, challenge, you know, anybody to tell me that they drink a gallon of water a day. So I think that might even be part of why um, I, I get the, you know, kind of results that I get from doing this is that I'm, I'm really getting a lot of water into my body and I don't drink nearly enough water. And I found that after doing the master cleanse, I'll continue to drink a lot of water. And so um, I imagine that one of the issues that I have when I'm getting kind of off is that I'm not, I'm just not drink, getting enough water, but I'm just not, I'm not that disciplined a person. Um, you know, I need real, real simplicity. And that's another reason why the master cleanse, you know, seems to be something that works for me. I'm going to squeeze these lemons and talk. So. One thing that generally seems to happen for me when I'm doing uh, the master cleanse is I, I, you know, have a lot of time. <laughs> I have a lot of time when I'm not thinking about, you know, what am I going to eat or, you know, preparing food or going to buy food or shopping for food. You know, it's, it's suddenly life becomes very simple when your, you know, meals are, you know, basically the same thing. So I get up and I squeeze these. So it does give me a lot of time to reflect on things. Um, and I do find myself, you know, coming to some clarity around, around just some issues and whatever, whatever's been going on in the world right now, there clearly seems to be a separation between people who feel that the world desperately needs to change and people who are resistant to the idea of change. And 
for whatever reason, and I'm not going to say like, I'm, I'm a change person. I'm a transformation person. For some reason, uh, the people who are interested in change um, are seen as a kind of, 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 as a real threat, as a real threat to the people who want things to stay the same. And I understand that. And I don't blame anyone for feeling that sense of threat. But I have to question, what is, what is at stake? Does the person who does not want to change deny the fact that the planet's a little bit in trouble? And maybe not a little bit, maybe a lot in trouble. And that something has to give if we want the planet to continue to be able to sustain human life, at least. You know, I imagine that whatever happens, there's going to be something that's going to adapt to survive in the world the way it might be based on what we've done to it. So, you know, I hearken back to, you know, and I'm not, this is not based on some like vague idea of what people think or what I think people think. Or... I'm basing this on what people say in the comment section because <laughs> I read them. I do read them. I read them all and I don't take them personally. I take them as an indication of what this person might think about the world. And when you make a sweeping statement like social justice is a cancer, uh, it indicates to me that you may be out of touch with where we're going. Because the result of a lack of social justice has led us to where we are, a led us to the, to, to the place where we have a... a you know, planet that's spinning out of control, where we have species disappearing off the planet every day, where we have the temperature of the planet increasing every year. Um, so, so knowing that, understanding that, what do you think is causing that? How is it possible? And isn't there at least some curiosity to find, and to, and, yeah, isn't there some even some curiosity to find out what that's about. And then investigate, if you have investigated what that's about, tell me, what do you think it's about? I'd like to hear some alternative theories <laughs> about the state of the world. And really not based on opinions, but based on like, what are the, what are the, what are the, the facts? What, are, what is the evidence that you're basing that? that theory on because I you know if you look around and you see wait things are are really broken and you have a group of people who are interested in investigate at least investigating and I think that that's part of the problem is that the people who you know what I hear from people is that they feel like they're being blamed personally for what's wrong with the world and certainly there is some, some, some rhetoric that might lead one to believe that certain groups are being blamed for what's happening in the world. But I think that that might just be that you're mishearing. Because I'm not blaming, let's say, white people for the state of the world. Because I don't believe that white people are responsible for what's happening in the world. But I believe that we have, that the fact that there is a group called, you know, white people is the result of, you know, someone's, you know, thinking. Someone thought to create a category called whiteness that is set in opposition to a group of people who are non-white. And that opposition is what makes possible, not what makes, but what makes possible certain 
power structures to stay in place. Because if I can keep you busy fighting about who's better, white people or black people or this group or that group, if I can keep you fighting about that, then you're not going to focus on what the real problems are. And that's that there are certain people who, for greed or for their own fear or for their own self sense of self-preservation, are holding on to power at the expense of the planet. Or so it seems, I don't know. And again, if you have another theory, please tell me, tell me what it is. So you guys can see that I've, I've squeezed out four lemons so far. I usually do it, I usually just do four lemons. And basically a half a lemon is supposed to be a serving, so that would be eight servings. So this one makes nine servings. And so that's basically what I'm, I'm doing. I'm making enough of the, oh, I just shot lemon juice all over myself. I don't know if you saw that. So I make enough of this, um, I make enough of this concoction for eight servings, but then I put it into uh, a gallon of water, which is, um, so basically, I think, what is that? Eight servings would be what, 64 ounces? And so this is uh, 120, Eight ounces of water that I'm I'm not actually putting it in 28 ounces of water but and um, this isn't gonna work I didn't have a I don't have a, a good container for this but basically what I do is I put this in there and then I add you know about half a bottle of this and I don't measure it or anything like that I just put about half a bottle and I'm that's why I usually have that's why I sometimes have a, um, some left over and sometimes I have like too little, but I'm not worried about like the flavor of it. I'm just making sure that I'm getting some calories over the course of the day. I'm getting some nutrients, probably not everything that my body needs to survive, but I have enough excess that I'm not going to starve. I'm going to be okay. I'm pretty, um, and, and I'm, and I end up, like I said, I end up being, end up, you know, feeling pretty energetic about all those things. So that's all the squeezing of the lemons. And that's really all that I wanted to think about with you guys today. I wanted to think about this idea of, you know, people who are so afraid of groups that are focusing on what might be, um, what might need to change in order for the planet to survive. People who are against that, what are you for? What is it that you think is going on with the planet? And other than just simply writing off social justice and feminist and Black Lives Matter and all those groups, instead of simply writing them off as, well, those are bad people. Those are just bad people and let's stay away from them and let's make sure that they don't do anything. Really, take some time to consider what is at stake in terms of the planet and how the things that they are fighting against play a role in maintaining the power that certain other groups hold. Because those groups don't get their power unless they're able to continue extracting wealth, unless they're able to continue exploiting people in certain parts of the world, and unless they're able to have a cheap labor class in the West, right? We want to, you know, we need to have an underclass so that we can exploit cheap labor. What would McDonald's do without people who were desperate enough to work for minimum wage? McDonald's would go out of business without a class of people who were desperate enough to work for minimum wage. Walmart would go out of business without a class of people who were desperate enough to work for minimum wage. And so when you have people who are struggling, if, the, if, it, is if it is that necessary for these corporations to have low-skilled workers willing to work for the least amount of benefits possible. If it is crucial to their survival, isn't it reasonable to think that they might use some of their power and influence over the government that makes decisions about labor laws 
to make sure that certain people are kept in that position so that they'll be desperate enough to work for those businesses. I don't know, and maybe that's foolish. If that sounds foolish, tell me, and tell me why you think it's foolish. Tell me how you think it's not possible. And I'm certain that there will be others who will deliver the evidence that shows exactly the ways in which these corporations do work together to do these things, to pass that legislation, to make sure that certain groups are deprived of a meaningful education. But I don't know. I could be absolutely wrong. I could be absolutely wrong. And I don't want to sit here and pretend that I know everything. And I'm sure that there are people out there who have given some serious thought to this. And if you have, like I said, please let me know down there in the comments section. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share comment, <laughs> subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto, big guns and dinky I love myself.